first of all, I think people should recognize the wonderful asset we have in the North Carolina Community College system. And today about 60% of undergraduate students go to a community college. But still in all, I don't know that the people understand the great benefit that they have. Sometimes it's said nationally that community colleges are the default option. That if I can't get in XYZ University, I can always go to the community college. The community college should be everyone's first choice, not their default choice. They should do that because it's affordable, accessible, and excellent. And when I talk about excellence, what I tell our students is that everyone in our college transfer program, every instructor has their master's or their doctorate. I'm a graduate of UNC Chapel Hill, very proud of that. But my first two years at UNC, a lot of those instructors were grad students. They were not going to be professional educators. And they were there really to get the check so they could earn their master's or doctorate. Here, our people live here day in, day out. Their lifeblood is teaching these students, making their life better. Uh, it's accountability when you see them at Food Line or Walmart or at church on Sunday. That's accountability. So I, I think we need to brand our system in such a way that people begin to see us as the first choice uh, educational opportunity beyond high school. I, I like to say we don't have football, we just have an education and an affordable price. That's what I think we need to be talking about. In doing that, I think it's important that we have the funds to do the great job we know we can do. We've shown we have the capacity. During the Great Recession, people came back to the community colleges in droves. Uh, but what happened during that time, the legislature would calculate the formula and they would say, here's your money, but we don't have the money. Didn't you hear that times were bad? So they would cut us, but it was non-recurring. It wouldn't go each year. But later they changed it to recurring. Last year there was a billion dollar surplus. Community college system still got a $55 million cut. What that means is they're not fully funding enrollment. That's the key. They need to fully fund our enrollment and restore that $55 million, but say you can use this $55 million. It will be in the formula that we use, but you'll get that money, but you can use that and you can have the flexibility to engage in new programs. We talked about the challenge of change. If you're going to change, that oftentimes means that you're going to have to offer a new course or a new program. But the community college is the only educational entity that is funded in arrears. If we have a class, we don't get paid for teaching those students until the following year. So how do you start a new class? How do you start a new program? It is extremely difficult. If that money was restored, we could have the flexibility to help this uh, challenge of change and be able to invest in new programs that more align with the 21st century economy. After all, we, we always hear we want to close the skills gap. That's a way to close the skills gap by constructing new programs and new courses that address those new jobs. But you need the money to start that up, both for the instruction and for the equipment. Uh, another thing that I think we all talk about, we need to remove barriers. And many talk about we need to get rid of governmental regulation. But there's been a recent governmental regulation, and that's the residency determination. Every student that comes in, we have to verify their residence particularly for a community college where somebody at the spur of the moment makes the decision they will come here and enroll. We're open door. I think that's a great asset. We take anyone that wants to come back to college. We don't throw them in college classes. We'll test them and do developmental classes to get them up to speed. But now we have to ask them, do you have your social security card? No, we can't take a copy. And for many people, they say, well, that's just a sign I wasn't to be here and they turn around and they leave and they don't come back. That's a person that wanted that opportunity, had made that tough decision to come back after years away from college to better their life, to better the life for their family. And all of a sudden, because of some governmental regulation that's not that effective, they were turned away. I understand the issue. Let's make it a criminal offense to fraudulently misrepresent your county of residence in order to acquire in-state tuition. Put a penalty on it, uh, but get the community college out of the police force. That's what we are, and it's a barrier to students. The other thing is they need to look at putting some of the study courses, the ACA courses, uh, as far back as sophomore year in high school with dual enrollment. 
Uh, it's not a college transfer course, but it teaches students how to study, how to organize, how to time manage. That is the way they will be successful. We're all about recruiting students, retaining students, and completing students. That's what we want to do. That's what we do very well at the community college level, but we could do better if these barriers were removed, if we got adequate funding to start new programs, and people began to realize the true value they have in a community college and how affordable and accessible and how excellent that we are.